We so often see the natural world as something consistent, something that we are separate from. But really, nature is only nature. It's only an entity that we understand through the lens of our own culture, our own time, our own bodies, our own language. I'm fascinated with the ways that human attitudes about nature have shifted over time and it really impacts the way we shape nature and the way things like gardens and the built environment shift over the centuries. And it also really impacts the way that man sees himself within his environment. My relationship with nature and the landscape has been the focus of my work for really the last 10 years. I spent several years making garden-like environments out of cut paper, and it was a very meticulous process that really draws from my training as a jeweler. I'm still, like a jeweler, really interested in the kind of history and value of materials, and really love to imbue my work with very intricate ornamentation. Unlike a jeweler, my work seems to be getting larger and larger and larger and expanding into this more sculptural or installation scale. With my recent work, I'm actually taking nature and making it fake. And so in the piece here at Mocha, I've taken shells, horns, other natural objects, but they've been coated and altered to make really an image of nature that appears artificial. I love the way when I make a sculpture entirely in black, when you first encounter it, it appears like a vacuum. It might seem very minimalist or even just like a black hole. But then when your eyes adjust and you look closer, the work dissolves into thousands of tiny little details. And I feel like that play of shadow and mass, absence and presence is really unique to black. I came across a letter written by Robert Smithson to Andy Warhol about a piece he made in Sanibel Island in 1969. And for a long time, I've been really obsessed with Robert Smithson's work. It's played a role in many of my installations. So I was excited to find something here in Florida that um, touched that history. Going to Sanibel was this really pivotal moment for me in which I was actually experiencing nature firsthand in real time. In the case of Smithson, it was interesting because there were discoveries that I made about his work that I never would have understood if I hadn't been standing in the place where he was, understanding you know, how the sun moved, where the shells were on the beach, you know, the scale of the photo works, of the sculptures that he made in their real location. I'm looking at this photo work from 1969 called Mirror Shore that Smithson made in Sanibel. And he brought 12, 12 by 12 inch mirrors and arranged them on the beach. I think they're the same 12 by 12 inch mirrors he brought to the Yucatan. I'm not certain, but it's funny because I've used a bunch of mirrors and projects inspired by his, and I had them left over, so I brought them here, and I'm imagining he probably did the same thing. I took shells from that location and brought them here to Jacksonville as the kind of prompt for my piece. Smithson had this idea of a non-site in which he would take natural materials from a site out into the world and bring them into the site of the gallery, forever creating an imaginary correlation between the experience of nature in a sculpture, in a gallery, and a real place out in the world. The title of this piece is Holofusikon, which is Greek, and it translates as all of the world's wisdom, or all of wisdom. And the Holofusikon was an 18th century natural history collection in London. It's really in the heart of the Enlightenment. Linnaeus is working at this time, developing the sexual classification system. And um, man was radically 
changing the way he understood his place in nature and also taking a really active role in systematically and scientifically organizing nature. The whole Fusikon is part of this desire of man to map, name, and control his whole world. The challenge of this space was tremendous. The challenge of the verticality of the space was significant. And I think the other thing that was really inspired this piece was the unique way that the Mocha atrium unfolds. So it's not just a gallery where you enter and see a work from one position, but it's a work that's gonna be explored first seen from the door, and then you'll approach it and see it closely, and then it'll unfold on multiple levels. For me, by putting these two narratives, this 18th century natural history collection and Robert Smithson together, plus my own voice, we see three different periods of time and how each reveals its unique moment, and then each also has moments of being the same, contradictory, and merged. <laughs>